I will go ahead and get started. It's 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining this Healthy Planet Consumer webinar tonight. My name is Jolene Gruber, and I'm really excited to talk to you tonight, right before the holidays, to give you some good tips to get us through all the holidays. Um, a little bit about me before we get started. If you haven't joined any of the webinars with Organica, my name is Jolene Gruber, and I'm a nutritionist. I've been a nutritionist for over 20 years. I'm also a mom. I have two boys. That's a, a, an older picture of them, but um, they're teenagers now, and they're both taller than me. They're 17 and almost 16, and uh, very active in their sports, and they, they play a lot of hockey. I'm also an athlete and uh, an educator with Organica. So a little bit about Organica before we get started and who we are. Organica is a natural wellness and beauty company from beautiful British Columbia, Canada. We love helping people live healthier lives, and we've been doing it for the past 30 years. Actually, this past August, we had our 32nd anniversary. So we've grown a humble line of supplements to an always evolving collection of natural health and beauty products, including Canada's number one selling collagen powder, which I'm sure you're all familiar with. So we're really excited to have the number one selling collagen powder in Canada. We're also the fourth recognized brand in Canada. So as you know, there's so many amazing brands out there and to be recognized as the fourth is pretty amazing. So tonight we're gonna to talk about, uh, you know, holiday stress, top five tips for a healthy holiday season. So everyone is looking forward to the holidays, I'm sure. I'm gonna go over keeping up with healthy habits, healthy swaps and additions for the seasonal sweets, how can you best protect yourself from gout flare-ups during the holidays? I know that's very common for a lot of people. Front-loading your day with protein and intermittent fasting your way to the new year. So a lot of hot topics that I love to talk about. So let's start with keeping up with healthy habits. So I think this is really important because as we get into the new year, we tend to indulge a little bit more. And if we can just kind of have a plan and I always try and stick to a really healthy regime during the day. And if I'm gonna celebrate, you know, here and there at the night, then I don't feel so bad if I did well during the day. So lemon and water is an amazing tool, not just for the holidays, but for always, because it's so great for our hydration. It's also great for our body pH. So when you squeeze lemon in room temperature water and drink it first thing on an empty stomach, the lemon tastes acidic, but after it's digested, it leaves what's called an alkaline ash. So it's very alkalinizing for your body pH. We tend to be a little bit more acidic in North America. So anytime we can get some greens or some lemon and water and things like that uh, into our diet, it's very good for our body pH. So, you know, trying to stick to the healthy routine and avoid, avoiding sugars as much as possible is great. So this lemon and water first thing in the morning is fabulous. It also is great for kind of flushing out the toxins. Um, anytime you're, you know, you're drinking water, it helps with your uh, bowel movements because um, our stool is pretty much made up of fiber and water. So water helps bulk up the stool. Anytime people have issues with constipation or not having regular daily bowel movements, the first question I always ask is if they're eat, uh, drinking enough water. So water is super important. So a great tip is to have that lemon and water first thing in the morning because you're topping up your tank with, with uh, hydration, which is great. Um, and then protein uh, at the first meal. So protein is fabulous to have at your first meal. So I'm not saying breakfast because people think of breakfast as early in the morning. It's whenever you eat. If you have breakfast early in the morning, that's fine. Try and make it protein. If you have a little later breakfast um, or more like a brunch, that's fine too. I tend to have a really late breakfast closer to lunchtime, which I'll talk about in a little bit. Making sure that protein at your first meal is, is something that you're gonna have because it really satiates you and it holds you over longer. For having those refined carbohydrates like cereals, breads, and things like that, the traditional Tim Hortons breakfast, that uh, drives blood sugar and drives insulin. So we wanna try and avoid those, especially at our first meal, because then it sets us up for a roller coaster of blood sugar if we're eating those refined carbs at uh, breakfast time, whenever we have our breakfast. So protein is great because uh, it eliminates those cravings. It eliminates that roller coaster ride of blood sugar and it keeps your blood sugar stabilized. Actually holds you over longer 
so you don't feel um, as hungry as soon uh, soon after you eat. So it's really good for that. It also builds muscle. We need protein. Most people in North America don't consume enough protein. So really good to making sure we're getting that at that first meal. And uh, it, will, it will eliminate any sugar cravings or um, make you feel like um, you're eating too much. I know if I ever have a cheat day when uh, I don't have protein at my first meal, maybe, you know, it's a celebratory meal and my kids are making pancakes, you know, on a Sunday morning. I feel like all day I'm hungry, like I'm chasing my hunger. So um, you want to avoid that. Of course, if you're celebrating and you go out for breakfast, that's different. But on an everyday basis, try and have protein at your first meal. And then getting enough sleep. So during the holidays, people tend to take time off of work and they're staying up a little bit later, which is always fun. But just making sure you're either sleeping in or you're making sure that you're getting the rest that you need because really good sleep improves your, your brain performance, your mood and your health. So getting enough sleep is like the one thing that uh, I'm a stickler for. If there's one thing you can do overnight to improve your health, it's get a good sleep. So uh, that's really important. And there's lots of things you can take. Like if you have a couple of late nights where maybe you stayed up later than normal because it's the holidays, there's some great products that you can take that contain maybe things like GABA, which helps you sleep longer, melatonin that helps you fall asleep. So there's lots of tools that um, I'll talk about tonight as well. But, uh, you know, having some electrolytes during the day is really key as well, because electrolytes are really good for energy. But um, when we're really uh, hydrated really well uh, with water and electrolytes, we're going to feel good during the day. When we don't have enough electrolytes, we tend to feel exhausted. And, um, you know, usually when we replace those electrolytes, you feel an energy spike, which is great. So a little bit more about electrolytes and uh, electrolytes and why we lose them. Well, if we consume too much coffee or caffeine, we will lose um, electrolytes. So coffee is okay, tea is okay, but if you're drinking five and six cups of coffee a day, I think that's a little much. Of course, you want to make sure that you're hydrating. I don't just mean water; I mean electrolytes too, because dehydration is a lack of water and salt. <laughs> So that's really important. So just stop drinking plain water all the time. I know a lot of people myself years ago, I, I think I was drinking too much water and that kind of flushes out a lot of your minerals. So you want your urine to be about the color of lemonade, pale lemonade. Of course, it's, if it's really yellow, then you're dehydrated. So just stop drinking plain water all the time. Add some electrolytes. Your body is 60% water. Your organs and tissues are about 70 to 80% water. And one third of our body is salt water. So we have to replace that. We are salt and electrolytes. So got to make sure we're putting that back in. Our body needs the salt and the electrolytes because that's what holds onto the water. Really important in the body. The sodium holds the water outside the cell. Things like potassium, magnesium, they hold the water inside the cell. So a lack of sodium equals a lack of minerals. Um, so it's really important to making sure you're getting enough minerals throughout the day. And electrolytes, like Organica has a great product, electrolytes with enhanced collagen. And that's something you can swap out during the day, like some great electrolytes for, you know, some sugary drinks like pops or juices or sugary lattes from Starbucks, which are good as a treat sometimes, I know. <laughs> but on an everyday basis, you want to make sure during the holidays, you're really making sure you're getting these good quality drinks and foods in before most people usually you know cheat or have some you know party foods and celebrate in the evening so just making sure you're getting that through the day making sure you're getting those electrolytes are really good because um, like I said consuming too much caffeine if you're vomiting or you've got the flu and you have diarrhea that will cause a loss of electrolytes exercise sweating any GI issues you need more electrolytes and any elevated glucose levels, so you'll need more electrolytes. So just being aware of the electrolytes and swapping them in for some, um, some maybe not so great beverages. So as you can see here, swap some water with some pop. That's a better choice. Swapping out the sugar-filled drinks is key. I, I've been saying that to my kids. Of course, they celebrate sometimes to their teenagers, but throughout the day, try not to have any sugary drinks because we get enough usually in our food. <laughs> 
just with refined carbohydrates today. So try and swap out those sugary drinks and pops for water, water with electrolytes, maybe some herbal teas. Those are great tips uh, throughout the holidays. Also, um, if you're gonna be having some alcoholic drinks during the holidays, swap out the ones with sugar. You could always have you know, some dry wines. You could have some low carb beers. There's also some uh, drinks like vodka with club soda. What some people don't realize is that tonic water is actually quite high in sugar. So, so club soda or a sparkling water that doesn't have any sugar and you can squeeze some lemon and lime in there. It tastes really nice. You could even put some mint in there. And then swapping your after dinner snacks. That's something that comes up quite a bit. A lot of people tell me that they're hungry and snacky after dinner. Sometimes it's a habit. And sometimes if we're watching a show where we're relaxing in the evening after dinner, we just habitually want to put something in our mouth. So that's, you know, there's some good um, things that you can do after dinner and really trying not to eat two hours before bed. If you're hungry, you can have things like relaxing drinks, caffeine-free teas, which I'll talk about. Um, there's some great lattes that Organica makes. We have a new peppermint chocolate latte and a pink latte and lots of things that I will talk about. But if you really want something to enjoy to kind of cozy up to, if you're watching a show or relaxing in the evening, try and have it, you know, more than two hours before bed and try not to have any caffeine or sugar in there because it's really key just to make sure that um, we're not having uh, too much sugar or caffeine at night because that will really affect our sleep and we don't want the added sugar anyway. So again, after dinner beverages, that's a great way to kind of have a healthy snack slash drink. I like to say beverages. Of course, if you wanted a little snack, try and make sure it's sugar-free, caffeine-free, higher protein. Sometimes when people are waking up in the night, it's because of blood sugar, because maybe they had um, their blood sugar was on a roller coaster ride that day. And maybe at in the evening time, they had a little bit more sugar. So try and avoid um, the sugary drinks and have some more protein uh, and low sugar. Uh, some, some drinks are really sleep promoting, which maybe they have things like melatonin and GABA in there can, that can prepare us for a good sleep that night. And drinks that are calming and relaxing are really good as well. So a few examples, um, if you have issues with blood sugar, like I said, and it's waking you up in the middle of the night, you wanna try some supplements to kind of bring you back into balance with your blood sugar as well. But some of these drinks that I had mentioned, so you can see we've got this amazing chocolate peppermint enhanced collagen. It tastes awesome. You could froth some almond milk or some dairy milk, whatever milk you choose and add it to, to some of that. And it tastes really good. Of course, you're getting the protein in there, the good source of protein, which is great for blood sugar. And it prepares you for a sleep. Like I said, when people wake up in the night, a lot of, a lot of time it's because um, of the blood sugar. So protein is something good to have um, before you go to bed, like in the last few hours before bed. And sipping on bone broth teas, enhanced collagen. I mentioned um, having some products that might have some melatonin some GABA in there. Well, Organica has an amazing enhanced collagen sleep, and that has GABA, which lengthens our sleep, and melatonin that helps us fall asleep. So really nice to have, uh, you know, after six, seven o'clock at night to sort of prepare us for sleep. We also have an enhanced collagen relax, and that can be taken any time of the day, not just before bedtime, but it has some magnesium in there, and people like to take magnesium before bedtime. And it's, it's not a small dose. There's 360 milligrams of magnesium. So that's like a full dose. So you wouldn't need to take a supplement of magnesium if you were taking the enhanced collagen in a tea or a latte at night. Sometimes what I, I tend to do is I'll take, um, sometimes I'll make a latte like I showed you, the peppermint chocolate one. And then the middle picture there, I'll take a ginger bone broth and mix it with some collagen, maybe even a collagen sleep and sip on that. And that's a really good source of protein, great for the gut as well. And always also prepares you for sleep. We also have some fun lattes that are caffeine free. I have a picture of a pink milk latte. We have blue and turmeric as well. And uh, you could add any of the sleep collagens or the relaxed collagens in there to give you a little bit more of a wind down without the blood sugar spike. So if you do have issues with blood sugar and you find it's waking you up in the middle of the night, sometimes it's adrenal fatigue, but a lot of times it is blood sugar. 
you may want to try some supplements through the day that will really help balance your blood sugar before you eat. So of course, making good choices, trying not to eat so many refined processed and fast foods will help. But in like when we're you know, you've probably heard of apple cider vinegar. I've got a picture here of the apple cider vinegar on a spoon. And when you look at um, when we eat food, the path of food, we put food in our mouth, we start to chew the food. That's the first phase of digestion. Then we swallow the food and it goes down to our stomach. And in our stomach, it gets turned into what's called a bolus. And then all the digestive enzymes start sort of breaking the food apart and creating a fire in our belly. Um, um, acid is in there as well, and that helps break down the food. So apple cider vinegar is something that's really great to take either off the spoon or with a supplement. Uh, as you can see, cider vin is a supplement there. You could do either or. Before a meal, it is fantastic because it has so many great benefits. It's sourced from fermented apples, and it's widely used. It's been used for so many years for uh, digestive purposes because it helps increase the stomach acid and it helps with digestion. It, it really helps eliminate any bloating or flatulence or nausea. And in our stomach, sometimes people have what's called an underactive stomach and that's when they don't produce enough of their own acid. So their digestion is slowed and we will gain weight from that. So taking some apple cider vinegar, whether it's off the spoon or in a supplement form is a really to take before a meal to help with digestion. It also um, increases the sense of fullness. So you, you know, you, you don't feel so full afterwards. And I always encourage people to make sure they chew their food and they eat slowly because that is number one. It takes about 20 minutes for our stretch receptors to respond. So if we're inhaling our food and we're eating too much too fast, we'll be like, oh, like so full, like 45 minutes later. So you want to avoid that. Just eat slowly throughout the holidays and always chew your food because again, chewing is the first phase of digestion. And uh, if you're taking apple cider vinegar off the spoon, it does taste acidic. Some people are like, I can't take it off the spoon. Well, then there's the capsules and the supplement form, which is great. And uh, people think of as apple cider vinegar, it is very acidic, but after it's digested, it really leaves an alkaline ash, which means it's very good for our body pH. So that's fantastic. Um, sometimes um, if people have some blood sugar uh, issues and they really wanna get control of their blood sugar, you can see the picture, it kinda looks like a bumpy cucumber there on the right. That's bitter melon. And um, that is very good for blood sugar because bitter melon um, is really good at balancing our insulin. It's been found to really help with insulin sensitivity as well. And you can see it, they do sell them in the stores so you can eat it or there's also a product called blood, blood sugar control that has bitter melon in it. That's the picture in the bottom left. And the bitter melon is the most bitter of all fruits and it really helps control blood sugar levels. So taking them before a meal is fabulous. So if you're gonna to go to a party, maybe sometimes I'll take my cider vin and I'll take my blood sugar control, pop it in my mouth. Sometimes I'll eat before I get home so I'm not eating too much at the party. Of course, if you're gonna have alcoholic drinks, make sure you eat before. If you're gonna eat um, you know, at home and then you're gonna have an alcoholic drink like three or four hours later, your blood sugar is really gonna to respond to that alcohol. So it's always best to have alcohol after you've ate because it'll take a little bit longer to go through your system and you won't get such a blood sugar effect from it. Also, when you are eating, if you can think of a traditional dinner plate, which has vegetables, proteins, and carbohydrates, try and eat the vegetables first, the proteins second, and the carbohydrates last. And of course, try and have a lot more vegetables than say if you had potatoes or something like that, you can have them all, but just try and have the, the, the vegetables first, then the protein and then the carbohydrates last. And that'll be great because what the fiber does from the vegetables, it buffers any insulin spike and the protein is great for that too. If you guys have joined in, in my webinars before, you probably heard me talk about protein, fat and fiber. Those are great for uh, buffering, buffering insulin spike and uh, making our blood sugar more even. So definitely great healthy add-ins to include over the holidays. Also some things that come up in the holidays is gout. 
So how can you best protect yourself from gout flare-ups during the holidays? This is very common. Sometimes it's a little bit more common in men than women, but um, anyone can get it. The, the, most, the, the gout that is most common in men, like I said, but women sometimes after menopause are also susceptible. So making sure that you're you know, getting good exercise, your blood uh, pressure and your blood sugar is healthy, um, if you have weight to lose, that will help reducing the um, instances of gout. And if you have a genetic component uh, in your family, you might be higher at higher risk, but definitely doing natural things can really help. So uh, flare-ups of gout can be really stressful and it can um, happen in the cold weather. It seems to happen a little bit more, maybe in the winter time, but um, a lot of things can contribute to it. So sometimes they call it like the, the king's diet. So red meat, red wine, all those nice fancy foods. So really making sure that if you have a gout flare up or over the holidays, if you wanna prevent a gout flare up, you number one, you're drinking enough water with and with electrolytes because it'll really help flush out your system. And um, flare-ups of gout can be triggered, like I said, by stressful events, alcohol, or cold weather. But what happens is the uric acid is what causes the gout, and it's from a breakdown of purines. So they naturally occur in the body and are also found in some foods. So some of those higher, uh, that's why they call the king's diet, so some meats and, and um, some pork and things like that. So meat, poultry, seafood, sometimes pork will cause more uric acid in the body. And what that also does is it causes your body pH to be a little bit more acidic. So drinking water will really help flush that uric acid out, but uh, also having some alkalinizing things throughout the day will help as well. So I talked about lemon and water at the beginning. That's really good for your body pH, but um, you, you know, maybe one to two liters a day would be great. But again, you don't want too much because you want to make sure you're not flushing those electrolytes. So some water and some water with electrolytes is amazing. And um, alcohol does interfere with uh, gout sometimes. So just making sure you're mindful of the foods that you're eating and you're drinking enough liquids. But what it does is uh, the water will really help remove the uric acid through the kidneys. So it's really important to make getting enough and we're, we are hydrated. So looking again to make sure our urine is the color of lemonade. And um, there's also products that are really good to help with gout. Organica has Goutrin, which is a fabulous product. And it has a blend of ingredients that targets gout. It limits the uric acid production and it flushes it out of the body. And it really helps with pain relief. So um, you can also take greens. So liquid chlorophyll, chlorella powder, chlorella tablets are really good because they really help alkalinize the body pH. So those would be great to take with Goutrin if you're worried about having a flare up over the holidays or if you get a flare up, it works really, really well um, because it helps the Goutrin not only flushes the uric acid out, but the greens from liquid chlorophyll and chlorella will help alkalinize the body pH. So you can see here the stages of gout. It can be quite, quite painful, so I hear. Stage one is when you have high uric acid levels and it's building up in the blood and it starts to crystallize around the joints. Stage two is acute gout. When the symptoms start to occur, you can feel the pain and the gout attack. Stage three is the intracitrical gout where there's periods of remission and then it comes back. And stage four is chronic gout. So when you're chronically getting the pain and it's frequent and you can really feel it in your joints. So it can definitely be really painful. So just making sure, you know, you're not getting that crystallization, usually it's calcification. So drinking enough fluids, getting those greens in and Goutrin is a great tool to help prevent gout throughout the holidays or treat it if you were to, to have an episode. And front loading your day with protein and good fats. So I talked a little bit about protein already. And whenever you eat your breakfast, you wanna make sure you're having protein and good fats because it starts your day off uh, even blood sugar wise. 
So protein is fabulous. Um, you can see in the picture there, there's some smoked salmon, some greens, and even some avocados. So avocados are a great source of fat. And just really, I think, focusing on your breakfast over the holidays, whenever you have it, it doesn't matter what time, um, but having those good proteins and fats, and you can have some fiber as well, that's great for blood sugar because you really want to start your day on a good foot or you'll be chasing your hunger all day long. If you were to have a traditional breakfast like cereal, toast, bagels, I would be eating 24 seven because my blood sugar would spike and drop and spike and drop. And you can really see how you feel 60 minutes after a meal. So 45 to 60 minutes after a meal, if you're hungry, the food did for you. So really try and have that protein, fat and fiber first thing in the morning. If you're a coffee drinker and you just like to have your coffee first thing in the morning, that's fine. Make sure you have your water or your lemon and water or your electrolytes and water first thing because that's great to go into your system first. And then make your coffee. You could even do something like put an enhanced collagen relax in your coffee. It's flavorless and odorless. It has some protein in there. You won't taste it, but it also has magnesium and L-theanine. So if people get a little jittery uh, from having coffee on an empty stomach. I'm, I'm one of those people. The L-theanine really helps buffer that. So with your coffee, you can have a little bit of protein in there. And some people say that that just sustains them. You know, some people have bulletproof coffee in the morning where they have a little bit more fats in there as well. That's an option too. But uh, adding a little bit of enhanced collagen with the magnesium and L-theanine is a real kind of tool that people use. I, I love it because it gives you that little bit of protein and it keeps that blood sugar even until you're ready to have your first meal. There's also other breakfasts. I love eggs. Eggs are complete protein. Uh, the 22 amino acids there. Try and have the yolk runny if you can. Of course, scrambling is fine, but uh, when the yolk is runny, you're just getting more, more nutrients and more good fats. But there's also Greek yogurt. You can throw some cinnamon on there, even some almond butter or some nut butters is, is great as well. You could throw some nuts in there. That would be another option for a good protein breakfast. Just making sure that first meal is, is pr protein and uh, you know some fiber and some fats, but mostly protein. Also, if you're not a big eater in the morning, some people sip on bone broth. Bone broth is fabulous, not only for nighttime, as I mentioned earlier, but it's also great for first thing in the morning. You can make a tea, a bone broth tea. And if you have digestive issues, Crohn's, ulcerative colitis, or just leaky gut or any gut issues, first thing in the morning, it's so great to have a bone broth first thing because it actually helps regenerate the cells in, in your gut. And there's good protein in there, good collagen. There's uh, lots of information we've shared before on bone broth and the, the benefits to to gut health. Uh, of course, it's great for joints as well, but uh, it's really good to have first thing in the morning. So there's protein in there too. So if you're not a big breakfast eater first thing in the morning, I'm not. You could have a bone broth and sip on that. And that just sort of keeps you going until you feel like you want to have your first meal. So definitely front loading your day with protein and you can add some good fats to that as well is really, really key. And intermittent fasting your way to the new year. So this is very on trend right now, intermittent fasting. And, you know, I think it's really on trend because it works really well. <laughs> um, what is intermittent fasting? I'll just start there. So intermittent fasting, some people, people refer to it as IF for short, intermittent fasting, IF. It's a way of eating that calls for alternating between your fasting and your eating at specific times. So it's different than other diets. I don't even... Intermittent fasting is not a diet, but it's it's different than other diets because it's not about eating specific foods and it's not about depriving yourself either. It's about eating your meals during a certain time frame and fasting the rest of the did the day and night. So I personally believe that in North America we eat too much too fast and everything is focused around, you know, the next meal and what we're going to eat and when we're going to eat. But it's really important that we also give our digestive system a break. So that's why I said earlier, make sure you're not eating two hours before bedtime. That's because at bedtime, you don't want to be digesting food. Your cells want to be doing autophagy. And what autophagy is, is just regenerating the cells, breaking down, making new cells, et cetera. 
So that's why you don't want to eat right before you go to bed because you want your, your body to be in, you know, cleaning itself out per se. You don't want it to be digesting that food. So definitely you don't want to eat two hours before bed, but let's say, you know, somebody eats dinner at 5.30 at night and they have a snack at around 7.30 at night and then they don't eat again till 7.30 the next, the next morning. Well, that's 12 hours of fasting technically because we're, we're sleeping, right? So that would be considered a 12 hour fast. And there's a few different versions of intermittent fasting, but each one follows a basic premise of certain periods of time during the day or during the week that are meant for eating and when food is limited or avoided. So the different types of intermittent fasting, for instance, the one I just explained to you would be 12 and 12, because if someone stops eating at 7.30 p.m. and they eat their breakfast the next morning at 7.30 a.m., that would be 12 hours of a fast. And then from 7.30 in the morning the next day until 7.30 at night, that would be another 12 hours. So if they're eating between those 12 hours, that would be considered a 12 and 12 fast. The most common fast or popular fast, I would say right now that people do, is something called a 16 and 8. And that calls for 16 hours of fasting and eight hours of eating during the day. That's something that I like to do. And my husband and I, we do it quite often, pretty much all the time, because I'm not a big breakfast person. And I do like the benefits of uh, fasting and having, you know, all that autophagy. So there's so much information out there. There's lots of professionals that teach on intermittent fasting, but I think it's a great tool, especially over the holidays or just in general to give your digestive system a break. So as I mentioned, 16 and eight is a very popular method and people usually skip breakfast and eat their breakfast around 11 a.m. and they stop eating around 7 p.m. And that's so super easy for me. That's usually what I do. Now there are the odd times where I, I go off and I cheat. And you know, if I have a, a, a dinner to go to or we have a celebration, hey, it's out, it's out the window, but it's a very good tool because it allows your digestive system to have a break. And when you're eating in your eating window, you can focus on eating and, and eating well, but um, it's really good because it can help you maintain your weight. It could also help you lose weight. And uh, it gets a lot of press, I think, for a weight loss tool, but it's very good for maintaining as well. And I recommend it a lot because um, it's really good for insulin levels and it's really good for burning fat. So really making sure that, you know, you're eating well in your window and you're not eating all day and all night long. Because when we're sleeping at night, we want our bodies to be digesting and doing autophagy. We don't want it to be digesting the food that we ate maybe at 11 p.m. before we went to bed. So that's not great. You really need to give your digestive system and your liver a break. So um, really important to make sure you're, you're eating well in that window. Some of the benefits of intermittent fasting, there's so many, but it does help with weight loss. It helps lengthen your life. It helps with anti-aging. There's been lots of studies you can find on reducing insulin resistance. It really improves heart health, healthier metabolic markers. It en enhanced memory. There's lots of information that I'm learning right now about memory and um, you know, enhancing your memory as we age. There's so many great benefits to doing short intermittent fasts. Of course, anything longer, you'd want to check with your doctor. Anytime you're going to try something new, it's great to talk to your doctor. Uh, if anyone was a type 1 diabetic or on medication for type 2 diabetes or anyone with a chronic illness, you'd obviously want to talk to your doctor before changing anything in your diet or trying something new. So definitely seek the advice of your doctor first. But Intermittent fasting is a great tool throughout the holidays to kind of keep you on track. If you're going to indulge a couple uh, times, go to some parties, make sure you're doing it in your eating window. And then you have your fasting window where you can kind of uh, reap the benefits. So lots of, lots of great uh, tools. Also really good for women in menopause. There's so many amazing books out there and information you can get. Uh, it's endless but uh, it's definitely a great tool. One of my favorite ones to use, especially through the holidays. 
Okay, and that pretty much brings us to the end of this short and sweet holiday season webinar. I wanted to remind everyone that all Organica products are 20% off for the month of December, which is very exciting. <laughs> um, if anyone has any questions, I am gonna check the chat now, but for those of you that need to leave, I thank you so much for coming to the webinar tonight, and I wish everyone a great, healthy holiday season and a good evening. I will check the chat now, everyone, so stay, stay tuned. Okay. Okay, scrolling up here. Yes, the session is recorded and it will be shared. I believe Healthy Planet should email it out this week. No problem. Yes, you got to put your kids to bed. <laughs> So what electrolytes do I recommend? Okay, I'm biased. I love Organica because they have the added electrolytes with enhanced collagen. I love the flavors. I also love that it's zero sugar and you're getting a good source of sodium, potassium, magnesium in there. So it's, it's my favorite. Stay tuned for some new flavors that are coming too. But um, the electrolytes are fabulous and you're getting that little bit of enhanced collagen, five grams, which is great for topping up your tank giving you all the benefits of hair, skin, and nails, as well as gut health and joint health and the added protein, which is awesome. What are some evening healthy snacks you would recommend? So I would first focus on making sure you have a good dinner, right? Making sure you're having enough dinner, have some good greens, some good vegetables in there, some good protein. If you have some, you know, some sweet potatoes or some carbohydrates in there, okay but really make sure you're getting a lot of vegetables and some good protein. And then if you're hungry later, I like to sip on things like bone broth. I like to make lattes to sip on, especially at this time of year when it's getting colder and you wanna just snuggle up on the couch. I, I often, um, I make like a latte with almond milk. I'll put in some enhanced collagen sleep or some enhanced collagen relax and just sip on that. Sometimes I'll do a bone broth. I really like the ginger beef broth and I'll put in a little collagen because that's extra protein and lots of good benefits there. So I, I would say first, make sure you're having a healthy dinner, get good foods in your dinner and then sip on some beverages like I mentioned to get some added protein and some benefits there. So collagen does contain animal sources. If you're a vegan or vegetarian, we do have a um, vegan vegetable broth. So it tastes really good. It's got tremella mushroom in there, nutritional yeast, and it's a, it has some protein in there as well. So that would be a good source for vegans and vegetarians. So can apple cider vinegar be substituted for lemon water? in the morning. So you can definitely have apple cider vinegar in the morning and uh, you could substitute that if you want. They're both very good for alkalinizing your body pH and um, the apple cider vinegar would give you a little bit more as far as the acid for digestion, which uh, is also great too. Is there a test for gout? I don't, you know what, I'm not sure. You'd have to check with your doctor. Um, I know that there's lots of symptoms for gout. Not sure. I would think that maybe they could do a blood test that could see maybe uric acid levels in the blood or something, but I would check with your doctor because I'm not 100% sure. Is intermittent, okay, so I've been hearing more about how bad dairy is to consume. So it really depends you know, as humans, we have a hard time sometimes digesting lactose, but um, if you, you don't consume dairy, there's lots of other great products that are high in calcium as well. Greens are fabulous source of, of calcium, sorry. And intermittent fasting is not bad for your hormones. It's actually really good. Um, so I would, yeah, you know, talk to a doctor, go to a naturopath or talk to a health professional and they can really dive into it if they're knowledgeable in intermittent fasting and uh, there's lots of benefits. Okay. Oh, thank you. Um, hey, William sent in a link. Okay, with uh, answers about, around gout, gout, gout. Oh, that's great. Thank you so much for sharing that. Oh, good question, Anne. How to use bone broth without clumping? Okay, this is a great question. I'm glad Anne asked this. So chicken bone broth, if you add some hot water, you're gonna make a tea 
and I always add some urban air, sea salt and some pepper and some stuff. It mixes quite quickly. Stir it up, the chicken bone broth mixes really well. The beef has a little bit more gelatin, which is really good nutrients. <laughs> so you just have to stir it a little bit more. It'll clump, but just give it another 45 seconds and you'll be fine. It will dissolve. So just give a little bit more love. <laughs> How often can you drink electrolytes during the day? You know what? I would just, you know, drink it. I usually drink it once or twice during the day. I like to have it in the morning to kind of top up my tank. And then usually later in the afternoon, I'll have some as well. Morning lemon, whole or half, whatever you like. <laughs> but I will say use the real lemon because there's benefits of getting um, the real lemon with some of the, you can even try and get some of that pulp in there if you squeeze it really hard because um, the real lemon is much better than the bottled, for sure. Yes, you can put apple cider vinegar in water and drink it before a meal, Jackie, that's a good question. You could have it in a capsule, you could have it in liquid before a meal, it's wonderful for digestion. It's also great for blood sugar. Yes, uh, Curtis, right, uh, he asked if real lemon Lemon juice is as good as regular lemons. No, go with the regular lemons. <laughs> I usually buy like, you know, six a week and, and just use them for my family. Okay, there's a question here. Weight management in times cold, resigned, or at work? Okay, I, I think I understand this question. I guess the person is looking for some something to eat during the cold weather. I would sip on bone broth. I think it's fabulous. We make a nice nourishing latte. So what about magnesium citrate powder before bedtime? What does that do? Well, magnesium in general before bedtime is very relaxing. It's very good. And um, you know, you could Usually the magnesium citrate, yeah, it's warm water, stir it up, it fizzes a little bit. But if it's a bisglycinate or many different types of magnesium, they're all really good before bedtime. Some are have different purposes, like citrate sometimes is, is good for certain things. Bisglycinate is great for muscle relaxing. So it depends on what, you, what you're looking for, but magnesium is good before bedtime. You can take it any time of day, but before bedtime, a lot of people like because it's very relaxing and it eliminates any of those leg crampings that you get in the middle of the night. Oh, water and uh, vinegar ratio. Yeah, you know what? Um, I'd say like a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar to, you know, about two tablespoons of water. If you can take it off the spoon, that's great too. But I would usually put it in a little bit of water. It's a little bit more palatable. What's the difference between the green and purple caps on Organica? The lids are all green. So I don't think we have any purple caps on Organica. No, we don't. I'm pretty sure we don't, I'm thinking now. No, no, I think they're all green, yeah. Oh, maybe, okay, maybe Healthy Planet has a certain special, special lid or something, I'm not sure, but. I'm pretty, I know that all Organica's lids are green. Okay, well, that looks like all the questions. Oh wait, there's a couple more, sorry, popping up here. Answered that one. Can a person with IBS take apple cider vinegar? So if someone has IBS, that's irritable bowel syndrome, uh, you would always wanna check with your doctor first. Apple cider vinegar, Irritable bowel syndrome is usually in the bowel, like in the colon, and apple cider vinegar will help with digestion in the stomach, but always check with your doctor first. Um, of course, if you had a little bit of apple cider vinegar um, with some water and you drank it and you had a burning, you probably didn't need it because your stomach is probably not underactive. You could you know, remedy that with having a glass of milk or oat milk or almond milk, and that would, you know, even drinking more water would help. So you can try that, but definitely check with your doctor first.
Okay, everyone. Well, lots of great questions. Thank you again for joining. I wish you all a happy holiday and the rest of the week is great. Have a good one. Bye for now.